Welcome to the five-step video series of setting up your Sage Estimating Essential Package. Each step will be broken into sections. When we reach the conclusion of the series, you will be working with the system. This video is an example of the process, not specific to your Excel Estimate Spreadsheet. Follow along the steps and sections applying the concepts with your own Excel Estimate Spreadsheet. In every video, you will know what step you are in by this indicator at the top of the screen. In Step 1, we will walk through the following sections. The SAGE Estimating Essential Database Structure. Familiarize you with the database sort structure of a completed database. Prepare your Excel Estimating Spreadsheet. Walk through the process of color coding all the data in your Excel Estimate Spreadsheet for easy identification. Create the SAGE Database Excel Data Transfer Spreadsheet, basically formatting your data to match the database structure needed to work with the SAGE Estimating Essential Package. Prepare your Excel Estimate for importing. This will be a simple copy and paste process. Create the database by utilizing the Database Editor. Review the Database and Estimating Essential Package. This is a graphical overview of the steps towards working with the SAGE Essential Estimating Solution. We will utilize this as a guideline for the process. As mentioned, we will be focused on the Excel Estimate Spreadsheet and the SAGE Database Editor for the first step. Let's get started. We will begin with a quick look at the SAGE Estimating Essential Database Structure. The database requires a three-tier format. Group phase is the highest sort level, typically reflecting the industry standard CSI format. Click on any group phase, we drill down to a secondary sort called phases. I can drill down even further to find items. Items are the foundational level of the database which store all of your pricing, formulas, productivity, and so much more. We will be reviewing item functionality in the future SAGE Estimating Essential Data Items video. This structure offers a tremendous amount of flexibility in sorting and reporting functionality. Now you have a basic understanding of the Estimating Essential database. This will be beneficial when performing the next few sections. In preparation of formatting your Excel estimating spreadsheet to mimic the SAGE database structure, we find it useful to color code the spreadsheet by group phase, phase, and items. This is helpful since some customers use multiple spreadsheet tabs. I will use this customer spreadsheet as an example of the process. In this sample spreadsheet, you can see what would represent our group phases as the highest sort structure, then the phases as the secondary level, with the third level of items that contain the pricing details. For easy detection, we will color code the group phases green, move on to the phases, which will be gold, and last, the items will be blue. Take a moment to repeat this process with your Excel Estimate Spreadsheet. With that completed, the spreadsheet is ready for the next step. In this section, we will complete a few activities. Create a new database with the database editor. Create a new Excel spreadsheet. And use the database editor to create the needed column headings to format the new spreadsheet. I will begin by reviewing our column headings in the color-coded spreadsheet. For creation of the database, we only need the item unit prices and the takeoff units. These columns need to align with our database columns exactly. Open the database editor by clicking the Start menu, Sage Estimating, and clicking on Database Editor. You can also type Database Editor into the search field. With the Database Editor open, click on the toolbar menu as shown. In the drop down menu, Click New. In the new standard database window, type a name for the database with no spaces or special characters. Typically, customers use their company name. And click OK. It will take a moment for the database to be built. Once done, 
you will notice that Sage has created a sample phase and item for you. We will delete these later, but we'll leave them for now. From the database editor, we will retrieve the column headings that are identical to our color-coded spreadsheet for both phase and item panes. Prior to that, we will add the columns in database editor that are needed. Phase columns are good as they are. Click the Items button on the toolbar. We will use the predefined layout menu to create the exact set of columns we need to match our spreadsheet. Set the database editor and estimate spreadsheet in a side-by-side -side view, as shown. As a refresher, the columns in the spreadsheet need to mimic our column layout in the database editor. Luckily, there is a predefined layout that is equal to what we need in the database editor. Click on the layout that matches the columns you need. For me, it is labor, material, sub, and other. We will click on this layout. As you can see, our item columns in Spreadsheet Editor match the columns we needed from the Excel Estimate Spreadsheet. We have set up the identical columns in Database Editor that match the color coded estimate spreadsheet. In this next activity, we will use the database editor to copy the column headings to a new Excel spreadsheet. Open a new Excel spreadsheet. Create two tabs, one named Phases and the other items. Now set up a side-by-side -side view with database editor and the newly created Excel spreadsheet. The reason for this is to simply copy and paste the column headings. Click the corner of the database editor column headings as shown. Click Control C. In the Phases tab, paste with Control V. Now we will perform the same process for the items. Select the Items button in database editor. We will scroll over to place the columns in view. In the Excel spreadsheet, ensure you are in the Items tab. As before, click the corner column heading and select Control C. Move to the spreadsheet and click Control V. We have collected the columns we need for the next step. The importance of using Database Editor for this process is to ensure we have columns aligned exactly with the spreadsheet. In the next section, we are going to consolidate the phases and items from our color-coded spreadsheet to this newly created Excel spreadsheet. At this time, save the spreadsheet as Estimate Import and Close, and minimize the database editor. Arrange a side-by-side -side view with the color-coded Excel Estimate spreadsheet on the left and newly created spreadsheet on the right as shown. As highlighted, ensure the Phases tab is selected. At this point, we are only copying and pasting the Group Phases and Phases. To begin with, we will copy and paste the Group Phase Division 1, once completed, then all the phases in Division 1. In the Group column, enter in all caps, TRUE for Group Phase, and FALSE for Phases as shown. In this column, enter only true or false. As you walk through the process, ensure that there are no blank or empty rows. Now it is a matter of repeating the process to complete the spreadsheet. Remember that the group phases are true and the phases are false. Here is the result of the entire process being completed using our Excel estimate spreadsheet. With that done, we can perform the same copy and paste process with the items. Ensure you are on the Items tab on the spreadsheet. At this point, we will remove the columns not needed from the color-coded Excel Estimate spreadsheet. Remember, we only need the unit prices and the takeoff unit. Again, a simple copy and paste process. Make sure the data is aligning with the columns correctly. Assign the phase number to all the items in that grouping. For item numbering in each phase, create a system that leaves room for future expansion of the database. We suggest increments of 2, 3, or 5. 
continue the easy copying and pasting process until completed. Remember, it is important to assign the phase to each item in the group and leave room in the item numbering sequence for future expansion. Here is the completed spreadsheet. There should be no blank or empty rows between the items. With that completed, expand the new formatted spreadsheet to take up the entire screen by clicking the Maximize button as shown. Prior to saving the spreadsheet, we need to format all the cells on each tab. On the Items tab, select the entire spreadsheet by clicking the corner as shown. Right click to expose the menu and select Format Cells. On the Numbers tab, select General and click OK. Move to the Phases tab and repeat the process. Highlight the entire spreadsheet, right mouse click, and select Format Cells. On the Numbers tab, select General and click OK. Save the spreadsheet prior to moving to the next section. We are in the home stretch, and this last section is very easy but very powerful. Open the Database Editor application. You may have this minimized in your taskbar or will need to open from the Start menu. In Database Editor, if the database isn't open, click the menu as shown. Select Open Checkout and select Your Database. Click on the OK button. At this point, we need to delete the existing sample item that is automatically created when loading Database Editor. Click the Items button on the toolbar as shown. Right mouse click the row to expose the menu and select Delete Row. Once completed, click the Phase tab on the toolbar. Now, open the Import Spreadsheet and arrange side by side with the Database Editor. Ensure that the Phase tab is selected exposing the Group Phases and Phases. Now we are simply going to copy and paste from the Excel spreadsheet to the Database Editor. Highlight the entire row of all the Group Phases and Phase details as shown. Click Ctrl-C. Now click anywhere in the Database Editor pane. Click Ctrl-V. With that click, we just created the database folder structure for the group phase and phases. The check mark for the division 1 is checked, meaning it is a group phase. And phases are unchecked as intended. They will roll up under the group phase above it. Next, we will complete the items. Click on the Items button on the toolbar in Database Editor. And ensure you're on the Items tab in the Excel spreadsheet. Highlight the item data in the spreadsheet and select Ctrl-C. Click in the blank area of Database Editor and select Ctrl-V. Well done! With just a few clicks, we have just completed the entire item database. Now close the Database Editor. Click Save on the toolbar. Then click the Check In button which ensures the integrity of the database, then click Close. Also, save and close the Excel spreadsheet. Now that we have created the database, let's preview the database in the Estimating Essential application. Click on your Windows Start button and select Sage Estimating, or search by typing in Sage Estimating to find the application. Once open, select the File drop-down menu as shown. Hit the Open Standard Database. Select the database we just created and click OK. Select the Data tab on the toolbar. Now select the Items button. This is the Permits item that we just created, but let's see the entire database. Click on the button next to the item is shown. Here is the database we just created. Notice the group phase, phase, item structure. By double-clicking on the 3000 Division 3 concrete, we drill down to the phase. 
Double click on the phase and reveal the items stored in the phase folder. Let's look at the details on an item that we just created and compare to our spreadsheet. I will open Flatwork with a double click. As expected, the phase and item numbers mirror one another, as does the takeoff unit. The prices for material and subcontract have been stored, and we are date stamping the last price update. All of this with a simple copy and paste. There is much more to discuss at the item level. Please refer to the SAGE Estimating Essential Data Items video for more details. Congratulations! We have just completed the first step towards utilizing the SAGE Estimating Essential solution. In this step, we created the database from the Excel Estimate Spreadsheet simply by copying and pasting to our database editor. This step has laid the groundwork for all future steps. Step 2. Trace Utility First, we will discuss what the Trace Utility provides and then walk you through a creating a library of traces from the database editor. We will continue the process in Step 2.